This video is brought to you by Morning Brew. And the quality of the art, ugly. The story, awful. No, they were assholes. Virgins making reaction videos in the mother's basements, all talking about how shitty we are. Probably all men. Damn it! He got me! I've never been so humiliated in my life! Back in December of 2021, I made a video talking about the Red Ape family. The lone pilot episode of an online cartoon series that was a product of the NFT craze at the time. One that would claim the title of being the very first NFT cartoon series in history. Which is factually false, but you know what? Who cares? Well, I guess the NFT buyers of the first episode might care, since at the time of recording this video, have lost almost half of their investment due to the crypto crash that happened in early 2022. Ethereum, the crypto used to trade NFTs, went from $4,200 per Ethereum to almost $2,500 in March. I couldn't imagine the horror of these crypto bros as they scream at the monkey cartoon on their monitor as their loved ones are like, Honey, what's wrong? Why are you screaming at the poorly animated monkey on your computer? And the NFT bro goes, I lost everything! First crypto land, and now this! Well, the salt mines run deep, my friends, as I recently discovered that episode two of Red Ape Family was debuted, and there was a link to this video on their Twitter account. And folks, they got me. They used my audio. They used my avatar. They called me Saber Fart. <laughs> They called me Saber Fart. Uh, that wound will never fully heal. <laughs> uh, okay. First of all, I am not upset. And I don't need anybody to defend my Maid Marian neckbeard honor, okay? If anything, I'm amused by it all. And I can't stop laughing at Saber Fart. Like, if anything, that's a gift to me. Also, does this make me an NFT now? Like, I had no idea that my video, which ratioed theirs, by the way, would get under their skin to this degree. And here's the wildest thing of all. They listened to my advice. They were like, hey, Saber Fart, you look like a dork in this Star Wars healing tube in the hallway with your stupid suspenders and your loser hats. We totally didn't care what you had to say even though we went on to make an episode that completely listened to your advice about visual upgrades. Got ya! <laughs> Am I alive? Is this reality? Okay, so again, this is hilarious to me. Like, I'm not out here to make enemies, nor am I here to indulge in potential bait. But this is just too good for me to not make a video about. Like, come on, guys. They called me Saber Fart. How could I not make a video about this? Again, I have no vendetta against these folks. Like, especially the ones who, like, are just artists, who are just doing their job. I have nothing against them. But also, I do not support it. If anything, I just find this to be an amusing oddity. Especially since they had a go at me directly. So this is my last video about Red Ape Family their production, their story, their animation, and the overall impressions I have about episode two, Revenge of the Saber Fart. Let's check it out. You know, I could be working on my gaming channel right now, Saber Spark 64, which by the way, you should subscribe to, but instead I'm just fighting monkey NFTs because apparently that's my life now. <laughs> All right, so usually I do an origin rundown about a video's topic before I talk specifically about the episode or media itself related to said topic. But hey, you can watch my previous video if you have a burning desire for more context. Just know, for the sake of bullet points, that Red Ape Family, like I said earlier in the video, is an NFT cartoon series. Now, an NFT stands for Non-Fungible Token. 
and it is essentially a digital collectible that exists on the blockchain where it can be bought, sold, and speculated as a stock. Hence why the value of the first episode of Red Ape Family, which was sold, had its value drop earlier this year because the value of Ethereum crashed. NFTs, despite falling out of the public spotlight these past few months, are still controversial and unfortunately relevant. I get dozens of NFT sponsorship offers every single week. And they go like, we watched your video about Red Ape Family. We love it. Can you promote our NFT? I'm like, did you watch the video? Do you even have to say? Apparently not. I delete all these emails, all of them. But it goes to show that they're still trying to get back on their feet and back to their previous heights and, and then some. For those who don't know, NFTs are considered controversial for a handful of reasons that range from rampant art theft, the low quality of the art, concerns about the environmental impact of mining cryptocurrency, which like of course fuels NFTs, and just the overall bad vibes of these snake oil salesmen trying to convince people that this picture of a monkey is somehow worth $2 million because it's unique. Okay, Red Ape Family decided to join this craze and to be more than just a JPEG and went the path of animation, probably hoping to convince NFT buyers that, ooh, how exotic, animation, I wanna buy that. That's good enough to sell it, right? No, it's not. Well, I guess some folks did buy it, but still, it's like you didn't understand the aspect of animation. Yes, it's animated, but it still looks bad. Just a bunch of poorly designed character rigs that were modeled after existing NFT trends. And uh, Donald Trump? Okay. And the story itself was just a fever dream that did not make any sense whatsoever. And was just mainly things happen and then other things happen. And oh, more things happen. How creative. The folks behind Red Ape Family are led by Hashim Zani. Zani, am I saying your name right? I'm trying, Z-A-I-N-I. Hashim Zani of Zani Media in Dubai. Which by the way, Hashim, if you're watching this, I mean no ill will towards you or your team. I mean that. You guys are allowed to make whatever you want and I'm allowed to criticize whatever I want. That's just the nature of the beast. Now I won't lie. I was surprised that you guys threw more of your weight into the animation of episode two. Like that caught me off guard. But let me give you another bit of advice if you're listening. Hire a competent writer because despite your visual upgrade, this episode is still a hot mess. What a great party. Probably the best party in the history of parties. Some would say it's even better than the Boston Tea Party. Okay, so what is the episode about? Off the bat, it is uh, twice the length of the original and more so. It's like, whoa, it actually looks like it's um, the length of an episode, you know, around that 19 to 22 minute mark. That's a good start, right? Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so what's the episode about? It's a good question. I, I watched it twice and I'm still not sure. Hell, even the writers aren't sure because they weren't even listed in the credits. Chris and Neil were listed in the first episode, but not in the second. Huh, well, at least we got two chains. He's still around. So the episode starts off with this montage of YouTubers, <laughs> like yours truly, uh, as we all rip into the first episode of Red Ape Family. Like you can even hear my audio from my review being used in the episode, which it's incredibly hilarious to me. It's garbage! And the quality! Of the art! Ugly! The story? Awful. Ah! The main ape character, Chucky, I think that's his name, uh, wakes up from his nightmare and then continues to dunk on Les Trolls in the basement and also makes fun of the fact that the pilot had bad writing and no character arcs, which, which would be in good humor if they did not repeat the same mistake all over again in episode two. But we'll get there in a moment. So, as you can see, the animation immediately is much more competent than the previous episode. But that isn't necessarily a compliment. Also, they um, dick ride Jake Paul a bit, which is, you know, cringe. 
<clears throat> no, babe. There was only one man in that universe. Uh, Jake Paul? We follow Chucky and his red ape family as they live on Mars in Muskville, because, <laughs> you know, Elon, and search for the golden NFT for some reason. Actually, no, I don't think they're searching for it. They're defending it because they have it from the last episode. But like Chucky the ape put the NFT flash drive up his dog's butt. Just, just you know, a really fun story, folks. We even get this wonderful bar scene that looks like the setup from Family Guy. And we even get a cutaway gag. Hey, Lois, remember that time when I was an NFT? I'm worth digital currency. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I died like two years ago and this is my hell. We then get what I suspect to be a bunch of inside jokes with NFT and crypto culture with their, I suppose, like mannerisms and humor. And we also have background characters from said fandoms. Like I imagine that this gorilla like at the bar is an NFT like series, maybe, I don't know. I, I really don't. It's not very inclusive to the folks who are strangers to NFTs, but I don't think that's the point of the series. It is very self-serving to the buyers of NFTs, which is of course their entire angle for selling the series. It's not for the outsiders. It's for the folks who already know. We then have this awkward fight in the alley and then some like <laughs> vampire bad guy with like an Indian accent who kidnaps an ape and is looking for the golden NFT, which he finds in the dog's butt. <laughs> cool. We, we then cut to the infamous hallway scene where, yes, there he is. Wow. Uh, guys, look, it, 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 it's, it's, it's Saber Fart. Oh! oh, this made my week. No. It made my life. I love it so much. I might even make it canon to my channel. I am. I, I am. Make way, Sabre Spark. There is now Sabre Fart. Sabre what now? Where am I? I've been stuck in that Smurfat video for like a year, and now you drag me into this monkey shit. See? She loves it. She loves Sabre Fart. Okay, so a fight goes down. A baby version of Elon Musk shows up. The audio mixing gets weird for a bit. Donald Trump is there, because, you know, LOL, Donald Trump. <laughs> and then Chucky takes a shroom in microdoses, and we get an admittedly well-animated sequence with apes running from cyborgs and putting a monkey baby in the Nile, like in the biblical tale of Moses. Oh. My. God. Monkey. <laughs> Moses. <laughs> I'm, I'm stunned. There's no way they did that on purpose. What are the odds of that? And I'm here for it. And then the episode ends. Thank God. So, my overall thoughts. Let's just cut right to the chase. Like I said earlier, the visuals are much better than the first time around. As the rigs are slightly more fluid and have more expressions, but again, that's not saying much. It's like saying this pile of dirt is better than this pile of mud, which you know, I feel bad because I know that these animators are given assignments just doing their job. I have nothing against you, folks. To the studios, the folks who are outsourced, the freelancers, you're doing your work, that's fine. It's the writers and the leaders who I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So I give you props, Reddit family for employing and hopefully paying the animators who deserve it to provide much more competent animation, which I will say also, like, it's not blowing my mind. We have to kind of keep this, you know, in perspective. It looks like a YouTube video, a Newgrounds video, you know, on the lower end. Uh, so for folks in the comments of the Red Ape Family episode two, where they're like, oh my God, it blows my mind. I'm like, eh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's better. But like, let's be realistic here. It's still not amazing. It's better though. I'll give them that. Which, you know, which is funny because like I said, like in my previous video, if you want to shut me up, then improve your visuals and writing. Make me eat crow. Ah! Make me watch the next episode and go, they got better. Visually, they got better. But here's the thing. I can't say the same about the writing. I actually wonder if the writers from the first episode quit because they aren't listed in the credits of the second. As a matter of fact, no one is listed as the writer, which is very odd and not a good sign. 
The story is cumbersome, confusing, and the characters are off-putting and not engaging whatsoever with their very not fun dialogue. The jokes fell flat, and the only times I laughed were the moments where they were making fun of me. But that was it. Just like the first episode, I also leave this one confused, wondering what the hell they are trying to accomplish here, outside of just selling a product which, you know, might just be all it is in actuality. Who can say? Yes, the Bitcoins have set me free, Chucky. You have no idea what is happening, do you? Not the slightest f***ing clue. In conclusion, Red Ape Family is such an oddity. And it's so surreal to me to see the reactions they had to my original review. I, I, I forget sometimes how far-reaching my videos can be. And to know that there are people at this studio, at this office building in Dubai, where they probably trash talk me and make fun of my suspenders with saber farts, it blows my mind. I can't help but laugh. Never did I expect the team behind this series to dunk on me to such a degree. But here we are. And you know what? That's all right. <laughs> I also find it funny that they might have taken my advice from my original video to heart. So while they're making fun of me, they actually deployed my recommendations, which it makes this all the much more amusing. All in all, I'm closing the book here on my channel when it comes to Red Ape Family. But uh, yeah, this was certainly amusing and at least it gave birth to the newest addition to the Saber Spark family, Saber Fart. So at the end of the day, we can say that some good came out of Red Ape family. And uh, you know what? I'll take that as an unqualified success. Saber Fart, welcome to the family. So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Morning Brew. So there I am. Waking up in the morning, got the sleepies in my eyes as my arm is flailing around as I frantically sweep around the bed sheets looking for my phone. I'm like Smeagol looking for the ring. Where is it? Where's my precious? It's gone. Oh, there it is. Okay, uh, now that I have my phone, it is time to see what's going on in the world. And so begins my unhealthy routine of wasting my morning by hunting down news on social media. Just a big old dump of my time that I could be using in more constructive ways like exercise, having a bowl of porridge and <laughs> yoga. I, I should start doing that. But here's the thing. That problem was fixed by Morning Brew. Actually, it was super convenient because when I tried out Morning Brew, I was like, oh shoot, this is a thing? Thank God, I needed this. What is Morning Brew, you ask? It is a free daily newsletter that's delivered Monday to Sunday. It's a great way to catch you up to speed on all facets of daily news. Business, finance, entertainment, tech, and all of that in just five minutes of reading. Traditional news is such a bore, and it's dry, and, and takes so long to get through and can be a slog. Uh, but Morning Brew takes that information and delivers it as succinct bulletins. Just give me that info as it is. That's what I want. And Morning Brew does that in a relevant, witty, and informative way. I use my Morning Brew to tell me if the stock market is still on fire. <laughs> yep. Still is. And all jokes aside, uh, in all honesty, it does keep me informed and in the loop. I like to follow tech stories. And uh, as of right now, I'm following this Twitter Elon Musk drama to see where it goes next. Like I had no idea how involved he was in the company and, and now he's like not involved. It's, it's all over the place. And I'm following this on pins and needles and Morning Brew is keeping me up to date on that front. Just Elon, please just do me this favor. Delete my Twitter account and free me from this curse. Please, I don't want to post Sonic tweets anymore. There is no reason not to subscribe to The Morning Brew, especially if you're interested in news about business, finance, or tech. Sign up for free by using morningbrewdaily.com slash saberspark, or click the link in the description down below. Go hit it up today.